Good morning. Welcome to part two of Smart Golf that got interrupted by that thunderstorm. If you remember, I left you 20 feet left of the flag here on the ninth green. So let's start from there. So in this second round, what I'm going to do, or second part of my round, is I'm going to do some smart things and then I'm going to do some dumb things just to show you what dumb actually looks like. And it is very easy to do the dumb stuff. I do it an awful lot of the time. We all think we're slightly better than we actually are. Especially as I've only played 10 or 11 rounds of golf so far. Doing the dumb is quite easy. Two sixty four playing two seventy eight. I'm still amazed how this zero in picks up the flag so easily from so far away. Now, every short par four has its own character. You cannot treat them all the same. It's going to end in disaster if you treat every short par four exactly alike. But on this one, this is wide enough for my driver. All right, there's lost ball down the left. There's no doubt about that. But you can lose the ball to the right a little bit and still be fine. So this is one of the short par fours where I feel the best shot is to get as close as you can. Try and get that birdie. If there was water up here, a couple of fairway bunkers and considerably more trouble, then I would be picking something else to tee off with. That's smart. So my little fade doesn't really have any danger at all in getting in this crap on the left. And if I overdo it, no problem. That's smart golf. Well, this might be smart golf, but I'm going to do something dumb just for the camera. Look at all that green out to the right. And this flag is on a tiny back shelf. I should be leaving this alone. Look at all this space I had. And yet I've gone for that back flag just to show you what dumb looks like. Now I'm below the level of the green. I've got an awkward chip up. The greens are fast, so it's very difficult. And I play it a little timid, and I'm about six feet short. And inevitably, that misses too. And we walk off with a bogey on stroke index 18. So you can quite clearly see that if I played 20 feet right of this flag and hit exactly the same length of pitch, I'd have been just fine. I would have been putting up, which isn't easy, but I would have done better. That's dumb. Number 11, down the hill. I certainly don't need this thing to get down the hill safely. I could hit probably as little as my hybrid and be nice and safe, but I'd be a long way back. But if you look on Google Earth, you'll see that this fairway is about 40 yards wide. And then out to the right, there's another 30, maybe 40 yards on driving distance. This is really wide. So we know what shape we've got with the driver today. We know what the wind's doing, so we can aim accordingly and have a bit of fun with the driver. See, playing smart isn't never using the driver, it's using the driver in the right place. You know, length is an asset to your score without a doubt, but you've got to pick and choose where you use it. 
That's the smart thing to do. So now we're looking back up the hill, you can see just how wide that fairway is and how much room there is on driving distance left and right. Nice. You know, peer pressure on the golf course is a terrible thing to give into. The higher your handicapper, the harder it becomes. You know, if you are all roughly 105, 110 shooters, you come to a hole like this on 12, where the further you hit it, the narrower it gets. It is very hard to do something different, like hit a hybrid. This hole is completely different to the short one on the top of the hill, the 10th. Here you've got to be more cautious. Now at my age and my experience of playing golf, I don't give a shit whatever people take off this tee box. They can hit whatever they like, whether I'm playing with them as a friend, playing a social game for a couple of quid, or whether it's a serious match and I'm trying to win the singles knockout. I really don't care what they do. I'm going to play my game and the sooner you can ignore the jibes that you are going to get for taking less than driver, the sooner you will get better at golf. I think you can see here that uh, it quite clearly narrows up the further you go. So it's nice to have a club in your hand that you're confident with, that you know it's going to go straight and isn't going to get into any bother. You also have to understand the relationship, what happens on an upslope and to take enough club when you're adding loft to that club. No point trying to thrash your gap wedge because it just isn't going to reach. We're going to the par 3 next. Now the only thing I'd say about par threes is you need to know how far you hit the ball with your average shot. Not that one you smoked last summer. So you can look at the hazards and using a range finder you can see how far it is over the hazards and then comfortably take a club that'll get over it with your average shot. It's so slow today. Well, I messed up the wind a little bit there. I thought it was off the left and it kind of like switched round into. But then you got to chip and put. You know, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to pull the wrong clubs. It's what you do after that really matters. 14 is rather unique. We've got to cross two valleys to get to the fairway proper. If you're not confident about this, then you've got to play to the part of the golf course you can actually see. I'm more confident, I know the line, so I can hit my driver. So it's all about confidence. Now I can't see where I'm going here. So three wood is out of the question. The hybrid is the smart play. I can hit it down here without it getting into bother. And that's always a good choice, is to take a club that won't get into bother. A very, very smelly flag. Just like the 10th, only this time I'm going to play away from it and the result will be different. I put myself in two putt position. If I'd taken on the flag like I did on 10, that would not be smart. Because then I could quite easily make a bogey if I miss on the wrong side. By deliberately missing on the correct side, I've got my par. That's what playing smart is all about. You know, we are not professionals. 
we cannot take on smelly flags because if we do it all ends in tears and a bigger number on the card. Now I've got the right club but down in this corner the wind is swirling around all over the place and sometimes golf is a guess and it doesn't always go right. Now for something very dumb again. I've left my bag by the next tee, I've brought one chipping club, I've got to the ball and I wanted the other one. So now we are back into bogey territory. So if you're going to be lazy like me and not take your bag to the ball, at least take a couple of clubs so you've got a choice once you get up close and personal with the ball and the shot. Well that was awful. Of course I'm playing at a very busy time of day so I've got a group in front and a group behind and I'm just rushing so I'm making more mistakes than I normally would. Right, the par 5 up the hill, the very narrow one. I can't reach in two. I suspect you can't either. So why do we try? The most important thing up this hole is to take a club that you have absolute confidence in. I'm gonna try my three wood, just for a change. In the last competition I played, I took three wood, three wood, pitch and wedge, two putts, thank you very much, par on stroke index two. This is a good choice. Except today, I didn't quite meet the three wood second shot correctly. Quality. But it is still stroke index two. It's still a place where 99.5% of the club gets a shot and sometimes we have to use that shot that's the smart thing to do is to use your shot I'm going to be landing on a down slope I can't stop the ball if I try and get funny get cute over this chip chances are I'm having another chip so come what may I've got to take my bogey Sometimes trying for an impossible par is going to result in a double rather than just that single bogey. So being smart, playing intelligently can mean knowing that where you are you cannot get down into and if you try it will be down in four. Now I know a lot of people love hitting driver, don't we all? And if they go three or four holes hitting a three wood, they feel like they're missing out on something. Well you are missing out on something, you're missing out on losing golf balls. So even though this 17th is uphill, it's a bit narrow. And sometimes the width determines what you take off the tee, not the length of the hole. But it's not a long hole, so three wood isn't going to do us any harm. Unlike the four ball in front, who were, uh, I think they hit six balls off this tee box. So that's two lost. You want to avoid that, then you can beat your mates and take their money. I enjoyed that. The reason I enjoyed it was because I was so confident I was going to hit the fairway.
Not sure what's going on with the wind for me to end up here. I should not be able to reach from 66 uphill. But the smart thing to do is to watch this putt like a hawk. You know it's not going to stop unless it hits the hole. But you really need to watch how it goes past the hole. It gives you the best chance of doing this. Well, we've finally made it to 18. It's only taken me two weeks to get to here after that first video. Uh, so, there are many ways to play a golf course. You do not have to hit driver everywhere like your mates do. As I say, if you can overcome the peer pressure and what you'll get in your ear roll for hitting a hybrid on perhaps a par five while everyone else is hitting driver into the trees, then you will get better a lot quicker. But the other, there are two other ways to play smart golf. The first one is to log your mistakes. Now, I don't keep stats. What I simply do is remember what I'm doing badly. I can't remember what I was doing badly in the first nine holes, but in the second nine holes, I've been hitting my irons a little bit thin. So the smart thing to do is to go and see the pro and have a lesson. And I've got a lesson book next week. So that is the smart thing to do. So keep a record of what shots are giving you trouble or what clubs are giving you trouble. And then go and get, get a lesson and then go to the practice ground or driving range and practice it. Don't take a lesson and go to the tee. You have to practice it. 